If you have bought a 360 camera, then yes, I'm a bit sorry to tell you that you will definitely need a number of accessories and mounts. You need them because you can only get the best out of your camera with the help of different mounts. And Insta360 produces excellent accessories. That has always been a great strength of this brand. As you can see, I have all the most important mounts and accessories from Insta360 here. And I'm going to help you pick out the best of them today. I've been testing all the mounts over the last few weeks and months and find some of them extremely useful. To make it a little more exciting, I've created a little hit list of my 10 favorite mounts and accessories. And in ascending order, with my favorite mount coming in last. Of course, depending on what you want to use your camera for, you may find other mounts or accessories more interesting than I do, so take a quick look at the different mounts. But before we even start with my hit list, I want to show you 4 accessories that really everyone who uses an Insta360 camera or any 360 camera at all needs. These are there for running out of competition. One of these four accessories is of course a selfie stick. As a standard selfie stick, I would recommend this one with a length of 114 centimeters. With 114 centimeters, it is sufficiently long in extended form, but when pushed together, it is very small and can therefore be stored very well. At the bottom it has a screw thread, with which you can attach it to a tripod or other mounts. It is very well made, for me a perfect selfie stick. If you bought an X3 for example, then you also get a protective cover like this in the packaging. However, the two lenses of the camera are very protruding and must therefore be protected as well as possible. I therefore recommend that you also get such a lens cap. This is an additional protection for the lenses. As an alternative or even in addition, there are also these sticky lens guards. With them your camera is optimally protected even when in use. The lens guards have a small disadvantage. You have to attach and install them very carefully, otherwise it can happen that the lens stitching and thus the recording quality of your 360 camera is affected. Then I can recommend your carry case. It allows you to safely store your 360 camera together with the most important accessories. Of course, it doesn't have to be this case from Insta360, but this one is very well made and absolutely suitable for the purpose. And of course, you need a micro SD card that is fast enough. In this regard, I would just like to say that Insta360 itself produces these cards, and I have had very good experiences with them so far. So let's start with my top 10 best mounts and accessories. In 10th place for me is the Helmet Unicorn Mount. As the name suggests, you attach it to your helmet and can then film yourself. As you can see here, it produces interesting shots. Also because you can change the framing during the recording. Of course you need a stable helmet, like the ones you use when skiing or riding a motorcycle. This mount is only in 10th place for me, because it is very front heavy and therefore the camera is not very comfortable to wear on the helmet. I rarely felt like using this mount because of this, but I like the shots I took. This is the longest selfie stick that Insta360 sells. It is 3 meters long, which makes it possible to take very special and creative shots. For example, you can use it to push the camera through a car, through a window, or you can use it to simulate drone shots. Actually, Insta360 sells two different 3 meter long selfie sticks. The second one they sell is this one. When collapsed, it's significantly longer, but it's thinner and weighs a little less. If I could only buy one of these two sticks, I would still take the thick one though. It can simply be stored much better and very important, you can regulate the length, which means you don't always have to use it fully extended. The thinner selfie stick on the other hand can only be used fully extended. The thinner pole however has another advantage apart from the weight. It's a bit easier to hold one handed, simply because the grip is smaller. But of course, that also depends on the size of your hands. When I first saw this neck holder, I thought to myself that there was very little I could do with it. Why should I hang a 360 camera around my neck like a necklace? That looks not only stupid, but also not very stable. And yet the neck holder is in 8th place. Why is that? When it comes to action cameras, I'm generally a big fan of the chest mount. The downside of the chest mount, however, is that's a bit cumbersome to put on. This mount here, on the other hand, which is actually from Telesin and not Insta360, is quite easy to put on and to close. And contrary to my original expectations, it's made of a solid material that can be shaped much like plasticine. You can put it on, therefore, and the camera sits almost as solidly on your body as it would with a chest mount. Position is a bit higher, but the shots look very similar. Even though this mount is from Telesin, you can find it like all the mounts I'm showing today in the Insta360 online store. By the way, there is a link to all the mounts and accessories I'm showing today in the video description. In 7th place is an accessory that is extremely useful, the GPS Action Remote. It's obvious what you can do with it. 
if you have your camera mounted somewhere where you can't easily get to it, so for example on a long pole, on a helmet, on a backpack and so on, then you can easily turn the camera on and off, change the mode or start a recording with the remote. This is not only convenient, you also save memory on your memory card because you don't have to start recording earlier than necessary. Included is a wrist strap, so you can wear the remote like a watch. There is also another strap to attach the remote to a selfie stick for example. This remote is also water resistant up to 5 meters. From a purely utility point of view, this accessory should actually be much further ahead. The only reason it doesn't is because it's a bit expensive, so I can't unreservedly recommend it to everyone. In addition, it is made of very light plastic. This makes it comfortable to wear, but it also looks a bit cheap. If you've seen some of the Insta360 commercials, you've probably noticed the bullet time mode. You turn the camera above your head in a circle, the camera automatically keeps you in the center of the shot, and a super slow motion is created. Unfortunately, this is only possible to a limited extent without suitable accessories. Buying your own mount or accessory just for this one mode may be a bit overkill. It looks cool, but most people will probably only use this mode two or three times. That's why I want to show you this bullet time grip. To use it for bullet time mode, you'll also need a selfie stick, which you'll then need to attach to the side. That's why you can get the bullet time grip in a bundle together with the selfie stick I already mentioned. So you get two mounts in one package. Alternatively, there is also this bullet time cord. However, this can really only be used for the bullet time mode and I would also prefer the grip because it has another advantage. It can also be used as a tripod. On the bottom, there are three legs that you can pull apart. You can then attach the selfie stick to the top and use this mount like a tripod. And that brings us to my number 5. I would definitely recommend a combination of selfie stick and tripod. There will come a time when you want to mount your 360 camera on a tripod. Maybe you want to film yourself or you want to do a time-lapse shot. Then it is an advantage if the tripod is already integrated in a selfie stick, which you will have with you anyway. There are two options. You take a tripod base like this one and attach it permanently to your selfie stick. This also has the advantage of making your selfie stick a little longer. The second option would be a selfie stick that already has the tripod permanently integrated. Personally, I would prefer the first option. Also because this first tripod is much more stable. In addition, the integrated selfie stick lacks the thread on the bottom, which you could use to attach the selfie stick to another mount. In fourth place for me is the bike bundle from Insta360. It includes a bike handlebar mount, an extension and most importantly a chest mount. This gives you everything you need to take interesting shots with your 360 camera when biking. You can also use the chest mount for other purposes, such as skiing. And the handlebar mount has a high quality finish. For bikers, this is a must buy. Insta360 offers a few more mounts for bikers. Here you can see the third person bike handlebar mount. Compared to the simple handlebar mount from the bike bundle, this one has two mounting screws. The mount therefore sits a little more stable on the handlebar. The back bar is also advertised as an accessory for bikers. You attach it to your waist like a belt and then connect a selfie stick. This way you can film yourself from behind at an interesting angle. I've also used it for skiing and it actually works quite well. Even though the mount not only looks a bit weird, but also feels a bit odd. Unfortunately, this mount is somewhat large and therefore cumbersome to store. Then there is the bike tail mount. This is attached to the seat post and similar to the back bar, a selfie stick is then screwed on. Due to the extremely rigid attachment to the seat post and the strong vibrations when off-road biking, I can only recommend this mount when biking on paved roads. There is a very strong pressure on the screw connection. The selfie stick cannot withstand this pressure for long. In third place is an accessory that everyone who wants to use their 360 camera underwater needs, a dive case. Last year in Greece, I had to painfully realize that the 360 camera underwater can't produce good shots if you don't use a dive case. The lens stitching just doesn't work. Without dive case, you can only use your camera in single lens mode. Of course, that's not what we want, but fortunately, the lens stitching problem can be solved by using a dive case. Here I have a dive case for the X3 and one for the One RS. Not only do they improve the quality of the shot, they allow you to dive up to 50 meters and provide extra protection for your camera. You'll see right away that my top two places are actually two rather unusual mounts. But before we get to that, I want to show you a few accessories that aren't that important to me personally 
but might be important to you. If you want to vlog with your 360 camera and it is indeed well suited for vlogging, then you should consider an external mic. Like most other action cameras or consumer cameras, Insta360's cameras have rather average audio quality. Insta360 offers a mic adapter that plugs into the side and has a microphone input. Of course, now you have to look for a way to attach a microphone. And Insta360 has come up with a solution for the Rode Wireless Go. With this cold shoe, you can attach the camera to the selfie stick and then attach the Wireless Go to it. An optimal solution for vloggers. If you edit most of your videos on your smartphone, I can recommend this quick reader for the X3. The condition, however, is that you use an iPhone. You can insert a microSD card into the quick reader and use it like an external hard drive on the X3. This will increase your storage capacity. When you take it off, you can plug it directly into your iPhone and the videos will be easily read by the Insta360 app. This makes copying and editing much faster and more efficient than wireless. Also interesting is this quick release mount. If you're using several different mounts, you can screw it to a mount and use a push mechanism to remove and remount your camera much faster. This works very well. There is also a version for the car. It would be ideal if more than one base was included in the package. Okay, let's move on to the first two places. Many of the best shots I've taken with the Insta360 X3 have been with this backpack mount. It attaches to a backpack in four places. The camera is then attached with a carbon rod. You can adjust the shooting angle relatively flexible. The big advantages of this mount are that you have both hands free and the weight of the camera can be carried comfortably. Also the shooting angle results in great shots and the mount is easy to store in your backpack. The only thing I don't like about it is that the way it attaches to the backpack is a bit cumbersome. In the cold, in the snow, you have no great desire to fiddle around with the four fasteners. And in first place for me is this claw mount. Basically we are talking about the motorcycle mount bundle. It includes a very stable extension rod and a very strong clamp mount. This mount is number one for me, even though I don't even ride a motorcycle. It simply has many advantages. It is very strong much stronger than the bike handlebar mount and can therefore be securely and firmly attached to bars of different sizes and is therefore flexible to use. For example, I use it on a ski pole together with the selfie stick to film myself when skiing. And last but not least, it's small, handy, stores well and is not too expensive. The perfect mount. Okay, that's it for today. As I said, you'll find a link to all the mounts in the video description. If you are interested in what are the absolute best settings for the X3, then I recommend you my corresponding tutorial. Give me a like as feedback if the video was interesting for you. There will be more videos and tutorials on 360 cameras. So stay tuned and see you next time.